Hops them off, ready to get underway. And here to bring in the action play by play in the first half, our colleague W.C. Hughes, on the left. Thank you very much, Bob Reynolds, and hello again, everybody. On the right side is Ben Davis, back to but on the left is Reese Morris, and the co-captain in this game here today. Lou Michaels approaching the ball. The Browns to receive to our left, the kick is in the air, and the play will be taken and dropped immediately by Ward. He picks it up, comes to the 10, comes up to the 15, and gets just across the 15-yard line. The ball carrier was Davis, Ben Davis, with the carry, just across the 15-yard line. Gigantic left defensive end was there to make the stop. 
at Cleveland's 30-yard line, a 13-yard play. Actually, Andy, that's the first time that we have seen the Baltimore coach use that formation. It was actually a wishbone Y, really. He brought the fullback up to step ahead of a deep setback. And I don't think that the uh, front four of the Cleveland Browns knew quite what was going to happen. They hadn't seen it before. That's the first thing you always see. Usually they don't put them in. That time it worked very well as Matty picked up the attic for the first down of the 30-yard line. They are in the standard pro set this time. And it's a running play going straight up the middle. And uh, the ball carrier is Jerry Hill heading just slightly off to the right side going inside to about the 28-yard line. Walter Johnson brought him down at that point. They have a flag on the play. We're going to get a penalty stepped off here to get to the ball to our coach for five yards for illegal procedure. That move will go back to the 35-yard line. Signals from the referee. So that'll bring up now a first and 15 for Baltimore. We still have that good field position at the 35-yard line. No score in the ball game. We're in the opening moments of the first three. Eight forty to go here. It's Baltimore Colts and the Cleveland Browns for the championship of the National Football League. One change in the Colts lineup now. Ray Perkins has come in for Jimmy Orr at the spread end spot. Boyle back in transformation, looking to his right. Now rolling out to his right. The ball is delivered long, looking for Perkins. Incomplete at the goal line. And out of bounds with the far side of the field. Earl Gell threw that one away, Andy. He saw that he had no chance. He didn't want to get trapped back there and take the, uh, take the loss. So at the last second, now he saw that Richardson had no chance to run any stat at all. He just threw it away. He wanted to make sure that nobody intercepted. It's now second down and still 15 yards to go. Jerry Hill is now heading off to the sideline for Baltimore. Hill goes out. will catch his replacement at the fullback spot. As the Colts come out over the ball at the Browns' 35-yard line, second and 15. The Browns are using only one running back now, and it's Tom Matty. Back again to pass his ball. This time to his left. The ball... Right along the sideline, the Browns have come up with it. It's Ben Davis, the right quarterback. He took it away from Jimmy Orr, and the Browns will have the ball at their own 14 yard line. A timeout on the field with the score Cleveland nothing and Baltimore nothing. Yards rushing and in touchdowns 
is the fact that at any time he gives the crowd a great shooter because you never know at any minute he's liable to bust loose and go all the way. He's that great friend that Don Shooter has talked about so many times. They want to know where he is every minute. They were Kelly is in the backfield this time, and he's being sent into a pass pattern as Ryan, as the ball is delivered by Nelson across the 30 yard line, completes the ball Warfield at the 32. So we've had some such third down plays in this game. Ball at the 33 yard line as the ball is face down now, and it is a first down for the Cleveland Browns, a 16 yard pass completion to Paul Warfield, also headed for the Pro Bowl this year, and the Browns' leading ball carrier during the season. They're picking on Lenny Lyles over there, that cornerback squad. Warfield just goes down about 10 yards, and it cuts back in quickly with that great speed. Nelson gets the ball to him, and Lyles doesn't have much of a chance on it. Now it's first down again, and dropping back into the pocket is Nelson, looking out to his left. The ball over the head of Kelly in fast pattern again from the backfield, and Kelly didn't have a chance to catch it. He was isolated on linebacker Don Kinnick. But the ball was overthrown by Nelson. You notice defensively, Andy, that the secondary of the Baltimore Colts, Bobby Boyd, Lenny Lyles, played a cornerback. In contrast to most of the teams during the regular season, like to play up close on those receivers because of the condition of the field, which can best be described as a dry river basin. That's about what it looks like right now. It's pretty loose down there. They don't want to give these guys with a great speed that extra step or two on them deep. And so they give them a short one against that long bar. And of course, both of these teams are known for playing a lot of zone defense, too. Now here's Kelly with the ball again, sweeping to the left side, but not going very far. And he is stacked up at right about the line of scrimmage, sweeping to the left, but he doesn't get beyond the line of scrimmage, which was the 33-yard line. Rick Bolt, the Colts' free safety, brought him down right at that spot. And we're back to that seemingly very frequent third down situation. It's now third and 10. Don Shula, who once played here in Cleveland for a couple of seasons, tended to be critical of the field condition yesterday, but then he caught himself and said, do you remember what happened to the last coach who criticized an opponent's field condition? So it's third and ten for the Browns at their own 33. And Nelson will put the ball in the air for the yardage, and he completes the pass to Little Forest across midfield. And in the cold territory at the 45-yard line, the tight end has the reception. And another clutch situation as Bill Nelson has come through again. It was a quick pattern for 23 yards to the 45 of the goal. And the first time today that the Browns have been into Baltimore territory. And the crowd here in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium, which will number about 81,000 here today, starts to come alive. Nobody has scored in this game with five and a half minutes to go in quarter number one. Rounds are out, strong to the left side. Nelson wheels around and gives off to Harrow, and he breaks through a hole and gets inside the 40, down to the 37 yard line before Jerry Logan makes the stop. Charlie Haraway is starting at fullback today in place of Ernie Green, the regular who has been out much of the season and played last week for the first time since a knee injury in August. An eight yard gainer on that play, second and two at the 37. A great Baltimore defense being tested now by Bill Nelson, who is only 27 years of age. Kelly, a halfback on the right, gets the handoff, slants to the left side, and goes to the 35-yard line where he is stacked up by Fred Miller, the first to reach him, the right defensive tackle of the blue-shirted Colts. They gave up only 144 points all season. They're going to take a measurement on this one, Andy, but if the Play started at the 45 as it did. This will have to be a first down by about the length of the football as the Cleveland Browns move as deep as they've been here in the first quarter. So it'll be a first down. We'll take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is WBBM News Radio 78, Chicago. The time, 20 seconds before 2 o'clock. The fourth first down for Baltimore. They got it on the measurement by inches. For the Browns, rather, did I say Baltimore? At the 35-yard line of Baltimore, the Browns moving the football. First and ten. 
And here is a play-action pass coming up by Nelson. As he, and now he scrambles to the right as he found the receivers covered, and he is dumped for a loss. Back at his own 43-yard line, Ordell Brazy, the right defensive end, finally got him, along with Fred Miller, as he rolled slightly to his right, finding his receivers covered. You actually couldn't blame the Cleveland blocking in that case. He got good time. He had his three or four seconds, but he couldn't find the receivers open. First time so far this afternoon that that front four up there, uh, Baltimore, has got the Nelson to dump him for a loss. The Ordell Brazy leading the charge on him, along with Freddie Miller. Milton Warren, the young man who picked up that key pass that got him down to the 45-yard line, he from the University of Massachusetts, who was the first-round draft choice of these rounds in 66. Good, strong kid. That was an eight-yard loss, so it's second and 18, back at the 43. Now Nelson wheeling around and firing out to the left side, and the ball falls incomplete, intended for Charlie Haraway, the fullback out of the backfield. Billy Ray Smith was covering on the play, and also giving good pursuit. Incompleted forward pass, make it third and 18 now. Both teams coming through in clutch situations, and yet we have no score in this game with three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in quarter number one. The Baltimore Colts, the second-best defensive team in the National Football League, third against the rush, fourth against the pass. Nelson, in passing today, has unofficially 50 yards, three out of seven in the air. The Browns are out strong to the right side. Back drops Nelson, back beyond midfield. Plenty of time, now gets the ball away. It's a wobbly pass, but it's complete. A flag is down on the play. It's Paul Warfield with the ball at the 35-yard line of Baltimore, which was just about where this series started. Don Schinnick, the right linebacker, brought him down, but there is a flag on the field. I think we're going to get a holding penalty here against the Cleveland Browns, uh, and this crowd will react as uh, officials moves the ball. We'll wait and see. Oh, it's a holding penalty against the Baltimore Colts. Of course, that brings up an automatic first down. But there's a break for the Cleveland Browns with the ball at the 37-yard line. A defensive holding call against Baltimore. And with it goes the automatic first down. You're right, Bob. That is a break because that was nowhere near the position on the field that the Browns would have had to achieve to get a first down. But they got it at the Colts 37. We still have three and a half minutes to go in quarter number one. The Browns are set strong to the right. Kelly on the handoff, and he meets strong resistance. Don Schinnick, the right side linebacker, was not blocked on that play, and he hits Kelly right at the 36-yard line. Billy Ray Smith also on the play. Two-yard pickup on the play to the 35. Second down, eight yards to go. A great defense by Baltimore, very experienced, average playing time in the National Football League for this 11-man starting defensive unit over seven years. The running backs are split. Nelson into the pocket, shooting out to his left side is for Warfield, thrown behind him and again, and a flag is down. Warfield at the 25-yard line on a down-and-out pattern, and just as he turned out, the ball went behind him. Lyles and Schinnick were covering Warfield. And we've had the yellow flag dropped again. This penalty will be, I'm sure, against the Cleveland Browns. Talking to Lenny Lyles, the official down there, to see whether Lenny wants to accept the penalty or not, or run keep the down box moving. Uh, it looks like the official is going to set the ball down at the line of scrimmage as the illegal procedure called against Cleveland. Penalty refused by Baltimore to keep the down box moving because that brings up a third down and about eight at the 35-yard line. So here's another of those big third down plays in which Nelson has been so successful so far here in the first quarter, hitting for Warfield to pick it up. These same two teams played in the 1964 title game right here on this field, and the Browns won that one 27 to nothing. That was also considered an upset at that time. Nelson to throw for the yardage with a man draped around him, goes out to the right side, incomplete to Leroy Kelly. The, and a good rush was put on that time, Bob. The Baltimore coach had the safety blitz on that time. Jerry Logan came firing through from the free safety. And Nelson had to throw it quicker than he wanted to and was off target with it. And so now on fourth down of eight from the 35-yard line, we'll see what the Browns do here. Looks like a field goal attempt coming up. And Nelson is the holder. And Don Cockroft, who made 18 of 24 during the season, 
will be trying a 42-yard field goal angled to the left. He got the wind a little at his back. The kick is partially blocked. The ball is loose on the 27-yard line. Picked up by Baltimore. Bobby Boyd with the ball. Takes it out of bounds. So the field goal try was blocked. And the Colts now will be in possession. There's timeout on the field with the score. Baltimore nothing, Cleveland nothing. Brandon looks to the head, a left to the jaw, a right to the head. Lewis measures him, right to the body, a left up to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. Yes, that's an actual on-the-spot broadcast of the famous Lewis Schmeling fight, one of over 70 great radio broadcasts of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Here is a truly nostalgic collection. You get Burns and Allen, Will Rogers, W.C. Seals, Young Widow Brown, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Durante, Lou Gehrig, Pearl Harbor, FDR, Churchill, MacArthur, plus many more. All 70 are yours for only $5.50 complete. You'd expect to pay up to $15, but Columbia brings you over 70 actual on-the-air broadcasts for only $5.50 on three 12-inch LP albums. Offer not available in stores. Complete money-back guarantee from Columbia. Send 550 to Old Time Radio, Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. That's 550 to Old Time Radio, Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. Back in Cleveland, Andy Musser with Bob Reynolds. The Colts have the ball now at their own 31-yard line. Neither team any points on the board. The Browns have dominated the play such that this is the second time the Colts have had the ball. Moore wants to throw in first down. He finds Moore across the 40-yard line, starts to break a tackle, but Mike Howell hangs on, and Yardy's recorded out to the 45-yard line. It will be a first down for Baltimore. 14-yard play from the 31 to the 45. 23 plays for the Colts so far. Check that, 23 for the Browns. That's play number eight for the Baltimore Colts from scrimmage. Two minutes and ten seconds remaining in quarter number one. No score. Baltimore out strong to the right at their own 45-yard line. While again dropping back, the ball is delivered off the fingertips of Mackey at the 48-yard line. Planning out to his right, the pass thrown high above Mackey. He got his right hand on the ball, and that was all. Ernie Kellerman was covering the same Baltimore tight end on that play. Mackey was the 12th top receiver in the NFL this year. 45 catches for 644 yards and five touchdowns. His backup man, by the way, Tom Mitchell, had a unique record this year. He caught only six passes, but four of them were good for touchdowns. So it's second and ten at the Colt 45-yard line. Ball again drops back into pass formation. Delivers the ball long for Mackey again off his fingertips at the 30-yard line of Cleveland. This was a long pattern to the right side with Barnes and Howell both covering. And Mackey could not quite catch up with it. So it's a third down situation again. With a minute and 53 to go here in the first period, a no score from Cleveland's municipal stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. The National Football League Championship game. The Cleveland Browns with their strong defensive unit up front and their fine and quick secondary. Forcing Earl Moore at least seemingly the game right into the point. At the moment, he's to go to the air. Ball has gone to the air seven times. Two completions unofficially 27 yards. Baltimore lining up with only one running back. In a trip to right formation, ball to throw the ball to the right side. The pass complete to Richardson at the 42-yard line of Cleveland. The pass to the 42-yard line, and it is a first down. So the Colts came through in a critical situation. 13-yard pass play to Richardson, who has really been something this year. He had six touchdown catches in his last five games coming into this one here today. So now the Colts are in Baltimore, or in the Cleveland territory, I should say, at the 42-yard line, and they have a first down to go with it. They'll stay on the ground as Matty gets the ball, three blockers ahead of him, cracks inside the 40 and goes to the 36-yard line of Cleveland. Fine block of the play by Glenn Ressler, big number 62, 6'3", 250 pounds, four-year veteran from Penn State. And that guy, Matty, just followed him, put his hand on his jersey and followed him right through the hole. It got to the 36. Six-yard gain on that play. Second down, four yards to go at Cleveland's 36-yard line. Jim Houston, who calls the defensive signal for Cleveland, made that tackle. He is the left-side linebacker. 
Baltimore out strong to the left, where Orr is the flanker. Ball turns around and gives to Matty again, jumping over a tackler at the 30, getting down to the 25 and inside the 25 to the 24-yard line, where again the Colts will have recorded a first down. Jim Houston pursued the play very well, and it was a 12-yard gainer for Baltimore to Cleveland 24. And once again, Glenn Rester leading the way with Sam Ball as Matty carries successfully with 11 seconds to play here in the first quarter down to the 24-yard line. And the Baltimore Colts in good field position right here. And with the clock running, this will probably be the last play of quarter number one. And again, it's a Tom Matty carry going to just shy of the 20-yard line. And there's the gun. That's the end of the first period with the score. Cleveland nothing and Baltimore nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Will Rogers. Somebody had a plan to teach Hall with birth control. And, and, and you know, it's a habit, really. Yes, Columbia has found over 70 great radio broadcasts of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. A truly nostalgic collection. The Lewis Schmeling fight, Lou Gehrig, Burns and Allen, Will Rogers, W.C. Fields, Young Widow Brown, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Durante, Pearl Harbor, FDR, Churchill, MacArthur, plus many more. Over 70 old-time radio broadcasts for only $5.50 complete. You'd expect to pay up to $15, but now Columbia brings you over 70 broadcasts for only $5.50 on free 12-inch LP albums. Offer not available in stores. Complete money-back guarantee from Columbia. Send $5.50 to Old Time Radio, Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. That's $5.50 to Old Time Radio, Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York.
has just gotten the first score of the game and set the kickoff for the Baltimore Colts, who lead 15 seconds into the second quarter, 3 to nothing. Reese Morrison and Ben Davis are back deep for Cleveland, standing on the five-yard line. Lou Michaels, a left-footed kicker, as I'm sure all NFL fans know by now, approaches the ball and lays into it. And it's coming up a little bit short at about the 14-yard line. It is taken by Morrison coming up to the 20. Excuse me, Davis is on the carry. Up across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Then Davis on the return to the 28. In Cleveland territory, a 14-yard return. And so the Bombs do now have the ball for the first time trailing on the scoreboard. We'll try to get something going against one of the most renowned defensive teams in the National Football League. Warfield out to the left, and on the right is Gary Collins. The quarterback is still Bill Nelson. He takes the pitch out, then gives to Leroy Kelly, and Kelly is hit behind the line by Fred Miller, who pursued that play very well. Now, there may be a gain of a yard here because of Kelly's quickness, but that's it. From the 28th to the 29-yard line, second and nine. Quarterback Nelson taking the pitch. And then making the handoff to his left, to Kelly. Second down, nine yards to go for the Browns at their own 29-yard line. Just underway in the second quarter. The formation for the Browns is strong to the right. Nelson Spritz is running back. Over center, Fred Hoagland. Now calling an audible as the defense switches. And let's see what this is all about. Nelson wants to throw, dropping back, scrambling to his left, spinning around, and can't get out of the trap. The ball is not free, but after the whistle at the 16-yard line, Brett Miller, the right defensive tackle, and Ordell Blasey grab him way back deep. And we have a loss here recorded back to the 16-yard line. That'll be a 13-yard loss on that play. times 
in this game so far. Twice they have had to punt, and once after their longest drive, a 42-yard field goal was blocked. Now the Colts have the ball at their own 40-yard line. They are strung out strong to the left side. Oh, ball on a reverse. This is tight end John Mackey with the ball at the 40 to the 45, coming to the left side and crossing midfield. And being dropped at the 49-yard line of Cleveland. A first down will be recorded on this play on the end around as John Mackey, a woman has been frequently, frequently suggested that he be used as a ball carrier. This time he was, but from the tight end position. That's a tremendous play for all Baltimore fans. Of course, they've seen it during the course of the year many times. And Mackey, a big, strong, bull-like runner. If he isn't stopped behind the line of scrimmage on a play like that and gets into the running room, he's a pretty tough man to bring down. So we're getting a measurement to see whether or not the Baltimore Colts will pick up the first down. And it will be very close, just over the 50-yard line. But a first down as the stake is about halfway up on the wall. Any portion of the ball, of course, on the line is a first down. And so the Colts get it. Yard line after a gain of three. 
second down, seven yards to go. Jim Houston and Walter Johnson got together to bring Matty down that time after they faked the pitch to the outside on Jerry Hill. Now the Cleveland fans want their defense to perk up right here. Baltimore spreading the running back. Running play right side. Matty with the ball inside the 10 and then hit fiercely and driven backwards. But he is just inside the 10-yard line where Dale Lindsay, the four-year veteran right side linebacker, has made the tackle at the 8-yard line. Here comes Mitchell back in the lineup again as the Baltimore coach used him to uh, take Jimmy Orr out of there. So they have both their tight ends in there again, as they do on short yardage situations. Third down about a yard. Both of the tight ends are in there. And, of course, Mitchell caught a touchdown in the division championship last week. Ball spins around. He gives to Jerry Hill. He goes down very near the goal line. He almost got through for the touchdown. A huge hole opened up. And that was intended, as Bob just pointed out, to be a short yardage gainer, but he very nearly took it all the way. The ball is on the two-yard line. Dan Sullivan and uh, Sam Ball on the right side of that interior line of Baltimore doing a fine job of moving Jackie and Johnson a little bit out of there for Jerry Hill, who's been plagued by injuries, but was ready to go last week and saw a little service in the playoff game, and he's been going all the way here at fullback camp noon so far. No touchdowns in this game so far. They have recorded this as the one-yard line. Here's a handoff to Matty, and he is backed up on the goal line. Now, the Browns have made one defensive change because of their goal line defense. They took Mike Howell, the free safety, out, and they brought in Bill Glass. Bill Glass, the author. He has three books going for the fine young man, member of the Christian athlete, group, who's been bothered by injuries. Jack Gregory, he's a young man, number 81, who took his place from Dallas State for doing a fine job for him. So they had a first and goal on the one-yard line. Now the ball is on about the half-yard line. It's second down, planning in for the touchdown for Tom Matty. He took the handoff and planted in from the left side, and he just did get over in front of the goal post. It was a 60-yard drive in 10 plays, culminated by Tom Matty's touchdown. Tom had nine of them during the regular season rushing, and another one on a pass reception. And so the Baltimore Colts have up their lead now to 9-0, and they'll try for the extra point with Lou Michael during the kicking. Seven minutes and 55 seconds left here in the second quarter. Bobby Boyd is the holder. The kick is in the air, and the kick is good. So the score now, with time out on the field, is Baltimore 10 and Cleveland nothing. No matter whether the Baltimore Colts or the Cleveland Browns win the National Football League championship today, they're going to have an edge over their AFL opponents in Miami because National Football League teams have the advantage of an extra item of protective equipment. Along with his shoulder pads and all the rest, every NFL player has a special lip protector. What's a lip protector? Chapstick lip balm from the people who know skin care problems best. It was in every locker room of the NFL all season long to protect and condition players' lips against the drying and cracking effects of wind and cold. And its special moisturizing ingredients will help keep the NFL champions' lips from drying and cracking down in sunny Miami, too. If chapstick works for the National Football League, it certainly will work for you. Pick up chapstick lip balm soon, and don't take your lips anywhere without it. Back here at Cleveland, we're in the second quarter, seven minutes and 55 seconds to go. Ben Davis and Reese Morrison are back deep for Cleveland now. The Browns trying to get a touchdown or something on the scoreboard now as they trail 10 to nothing. Lou Michael, who has personally scored four points in this game, sets the kickoff for Baltimore. Michael's approaching the ball. It's in the air. Again, not going too deep, but very high. Taken by Morrison on the 8-yard line, coming to the 15, planning to his left at the 20. A flag is down. Morrison gets out to the 30-yard line. The flag was thrown on a blocking play back near the 15-yard line as Morrison advanced the ball to about the 31 on a 22-yard return for Reese Morrison, the reserve running back out of Southwest Texas State. Glenn Ressler... The uh, left guard of the of 
the Baltimore coach involved in that play. It was a holding penalty, moving the ball back. A clip against the Cleveland Browns involved. Sets the ball all the way back now to about the nine-yard line, so that nullifies that fine return and sets the Cleveland Browns deep in their own territory, trailing 10 to nothing. First down to 10 from their own nine-yard line. And the Browns fans now are urging the team to get moving. The first play will be on the Browns. The Kelly running wide to the right. Bobby Boyd has a hold of him back there and trips him up maybe for a yard loss. We're going to pause now 10 seconds for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. WBBM Chicago, News Radio 78. The temperature is 21 degrees officially in Chicago at 231. Kelly lost the yard on that sweep to the right side, so it's back at the 8th, 2nd and 11 for the Browns, who had their huddle back behind the goal line. And they trail here, playing in their own stadium. Last score of 10 nothing. The handoff to Haraway this time, slanting off right tackle, getting out across the 10 and going to about the 12-yard line. About a four-yard carry for Haraway, brought down by Bubba Smith. Up the fences end of the Colts, a second-year man from Michigan State who played inside last year, but as Bob Reynolds pointed out earlier, has performed much more successfully on the outside this season. So now we have third down at eight yards to go. Big play for the Browns who send Warfield wide to the left, and they have Collins spread on the right side. Go to Shire, Lenny Lyles is playing him real loose. And here's the pass delivered in the air, complete to Haraway at the 25 to the 27 yard line. The fullback Haraway made the key reception, brought down by Dennis Goblitz and Rick Holt. But the Browns will have their first down, and a clutch one of it is as it moves the ball out from the shadow of their own goal line, out to the 28 yard line. 16 yard pass play, giving the Browns a first down. And once again, Nelson has come up with that big third down pass play to keep the ball in possession of the Browns and keep it moving. Cleveland has six first downs with no points. Pass out to the left, thrown behind Paul Warfield and very nearly picked off by Lenny Lyles, who actually, with the ball behind Warfield as he tried to grab it, in a little better position. But the ball was delivered very sharply, and Lyles neither could control it. Another young man who played his college ball at Louisville. The roar from the crowd is for Bubba Smith, who is limping off the field. He seems to be having a little problem with one of his legs. He's been replaced in there by Roy Hilton. Big number 85, young man from Jackson State. Here's the draw play used by Cleveland to give the ball to Leroy Kelly, bouncing out across the 30. To the 33 yard line where Cordell Bracey makes the stop. So Kelly has yet to break loose for a long gainer here today. And so far, the Baltimore defense has played him very well. Of course, it's a mistake to try to key simply on someone like Kelly because Cleveland can do other things very well, too. We were talking a moment ago about Lenny Niles, young man from Louisville. Another young man who played his college ball at Louisville is watching from the sidelines today. Wishing he could be in there, the great, of course, Johnny United. It's third and five for the Browns. Back in pass formation and putting the ball up for grabs, and a flag goes down as the pass falls incomplete, intended for Morris at the 45-yard line. A flag was thrown on that play. Rick Falk was covering. Lenny Lyles was uh, a little over anxious, grabbed the hole of the intended receiver. The official was right there to spot it, and so they'll call a... Interference in the holding penalty against the Baltimore coach Lenny Lyles at the Browns 43 yard line. That brings up the first down, of course. So, with five minutes to play here in the first half, and the Baltimore coach leading it 10 to nothing, the Browns are alive, and the crowd of 80,000, many of them, of course, a large majority of them, Cleveland Browns fans, imploring the club to take advantage of the break now and keep it going. Cleveland still on its own half of the football field at the 43-yard line. Strong right and a near collision in the backfield as Haraway gets the handoff, comes to the left side, crosses the 45, and is down at the 47-yard line by Don Kinnick on a four-yard pickup. So they've used Haraway a lot here today. 
realizing that Baltimore is ever watchful of Leroy Kelly, and you can't blame them for that. Put the ball officially on the 48-yard line and make it second down and five yards to go. The Browns, 52 yards away from their first score. They trail here 10 to nothing. They break huddle and come out strong to the right. The running backs are split. Kelly gets the handoff, goes to the right side. Again, a flag is down as he is sacked up at his own 49-yard line after a pickup of only one. Be an illegal procedure called against the Cleveland Browns. We'll see whether or not Baltimore gives him the yard gain and keeps the down block moving or takes the penalty. One of the setbacks for Baltimore, for the Browns rather, started a little quickly, and so we'll see now whether they're going to take the penalty, and they are. Five-yard penalty for illegal procedure against the Cleveland Browns. Penalty-wise here uh, this afternoon, that's the third penalty for 15 yards against the Browns. Throws the ball back to the Brown 43-yard line. Brings up the second down, and just about 10 yards to go. That's right, Bob. The uh, series started on just about the 43 last time. So the Browns are out. Strong to the left. Running back set to the right side. Bill Nelson grabs the ball from center, throws out to the right side, completes his pass to Haraway at the 40, gets up to the 45, and slams the ball down as he realizes he doesn't have the necessary yardage. Mike Curtis, left side linebacker in on the tackle. Best to play by Curtis, too, because the screen was set up to, catch, to uh, Haraway out there. And Curtis played the defender off and grabbed Haraway before he could turn the corner. Haraway a little upset, slamming the wall down as he got just up over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Now the Browns are in a third down situation. They need about six for the first. Now they have come through on many clutch situations here today, and this is one trailing 10 to nothing. They string out wide to the left. Nelson drops back. Good protection. Over the middle he goes, and it's oh, intercepted by Richie Falk at the 35-yard line, up to the 40, up the field, and into Cleveland territory at the 43-yard line. The free safety, Rick Falk, who had six interceptions during the season, picked that one off. Bill Corrin was the intended receiver, but the Colts have the football back. Timeout has been called on the field with the score. Baltimore 10 and Cleveland nothing. Corino, the out of the year, comes back with new winners. Corino, 1969. Now with seven new engines, all the way up to a 428 Cobra Jet V8. Corino, 1969. Brought up in the tough neighborhoods of Daytona, Riverside, and Bristol to be a winner. Torino gives you the performance, the handling, the maneuverability, and the room you never thought you could get in Torino's place flat. Torino at your four dealers, the place you've got to go to see what's going on. <laughs> interception for either side. Ben Davis made one, and now Rick Volk has gotten one to get the football back for the Baltimore Colts. They have it on the ground, 43-yard line. And with 3.17 left to go in the second quarter, they lead 10-0. This is Jerry Hill sweeping to the left side and diving to get inside the 40. About a three-yard gain for the fullback, Jerry Hill, the tackle made by Jack Gregory and Jim Kanicki. Second down, seven yards to go for the Baltimore Colts. There has been a lot of frustration associated with the Baltimore football over the past couple of years. Last season, of course, they were 11, 0, and 2 with a game to go. They lost to the Rams, and they didn't qualify for the playoffs despite their brilliant record. At the 40. Making the hand out to the right side. Moyle now throws back to the other side to Mackey at the 40, to the 35, to the 30, down the left sideline to the 20, 
to the 15 yard line, and McCall pops loose and the Browns have the football. Up the far side of the field, number 40 for the Cleveland Browns, Eric Spine, got the football. And this will have to be ruled a fumble following the past reception, and Cleveland comes right back with the ball, returning it to their own 24 yard line. It was a little uh, sweet pass down to Mackey. Mackey getting a great block from Curry and the last one from Mackey. They step down and cut back in. He was hit and hit hard. The ball rolled loose. Was picked up by Eric Barnes. And so what looked like a fine game for the Baltimore Colts is turned instead into a bubble recovery of the Browns have it. Nelson, and here is a near interception, and did he keep it? It's Mike Curtis, he did. <laughs> and the Colts have it right back. A sideline juggling act by Mike Curtis as Nelson passed on first down, and Baltimore has that football right back again. He had trouble maintaining control of that football along the far sideline. The yard line is about the 32 of Cleveland. This thing is getting wild out here at Cleveland Municipal Stadium as they exchange uh, ball control. Baltimore Colts losing it on the end of a fast play to Mackey. was swung down deep in, in the round territory. They were very on the very first play from scrimmage. The uh, Colts get the ball right back again on Curtis's interception along the sidelines. And so the situation is this. We have a minute and 59 to go in the first half here. The ball is at the 33 of the Cleveland Browns. It will be first down and 10 for the Baltimore Colts when play is resumed. Now, coming up on most of the CBS radio network stations as the season progresses, the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. Texas and Tennessee, great battle that should be. The playoff bowl on January 5th, a week from today at Miami's Orange Bowl, putting the Minnesota Vikings against the Dallas Cowboys. And then, to wind it up for the great season, CBS will bring you the Pro Bowl game on January 19th from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. All presentations of CBS. The score of that Oakland-New York uh, game is now 23 to 20, and the Oakland Raiders have gone ahead with Joe Namath and company. I don't know whether that's the final or not, uh, Andy, but it's in the fourth period anyway, and they've come from behind to go out and front by three, and they must be having a wild one down there like we are here. And I'll say they are, and that game played in only slightly warmer temperatures than we have here in Cleveland today. The ball on the Browns' 32-yard line. The Colts back in possession now, using Matty on the right side to go through a gigantic hole and hit hard as he goes inside the 25, down to about the 21-yard line. Matty was really hit by Mike Howell, who was only 6'1 and 190 pounds, but he banged into Matty awfully hard. Once again, the right side of that offensive line for Baltimore, Dan Sullivan and Sam Ball blocking very well, moving uh, Walt Johnson out of there that time, along with the Ron Saito. And the play brought Baltimore a first down. Now, here's the handoff to Jerry Hill. He nearly slips and falls as he goes inside the 15, down to the 11-yard line. And they could be close to another first down here if maybe inches shy. That was a draw play again, this time to Jerry Hill. Fine fullback, he set just a step or two, paused just momentarily, went right up the middle. And again, we can't say enough about the interior blocking of Vogel with Rester, Sullivan, and Ball along that line for Baltimore. They're handling that Cleveland front ball very well. Chains onto the field for a measurement here, and it looks like they'll be short by about a foot. Well, we'll see what they call here. Second down, and just about a matter of... Uh, Half a yard or so to go for the first down, and we'll see whether Morrow goes for the pass on this one or whether he goes for the running play. A minute and five seconds is all that remains here in the first half of play. Matty's going to make the try, sweeping to the left, inside the 10 to the 5. He's going to go and cut down for Tom Matty. He swept to the left side, he used his blockers perfectly, and he got the score. 32 yards and three plays for the Baltimore Colts after the exchange of the football. And the Colts have edged their advantage up now to 16-0 over Cleveland. A team which defeated them in the 64 championship game, 27 to nothing. Now we 
have the Jets, by the way, back over Oakland, 27-23, still in the fourth quarter. Michaels for the extra point try with Boyd. The kick is in the air. The kick is good. So they can now Baltimore 17 and Cleveland nothing. 58 seconds left to go here in the first half. And the Baltimore Colts have taken advantage of the exchange of footballs. They've uh, occurred a couple of times here. We had Eric Barnes with an interception, but Mike Curtis came right back with one of his own. And three plays later, Baltimore has its second touchdown. So Earl Morrill, who has done the job all season long for the injured Johnny Unitas, is having a good first half here today and directing his club to this 17-0 lead with all points coming here in the second quarter. They were scoreless at the end of one. Again, Ben Davis and Reese Morrison will be back deep for Cleveland. And Lou Michaels will be kicking off again with less than a minute to go here in the first half. Big Lou approaching the ball and sailing it deep into the left side. It is taken on the two-yard line, probably for a moment by Morrison. Now he comes up over the 10 and to the 15 and to about the 17-yard line. Morrison on the return, a 15-yard return. And the Browns really have their work cut out for them. Whether they will attempt to make some headway here with 53 seconds, and the clock is running, by the way, or whether they will wait and set their strategy in the second half as anybody's guess. But they do have the ball on their own 16-yard line right now with the clock running. Nelson has been unable to generate much offense, and here is a ball out to the left side, dropped by Leroy Kelly at about the 20-yard line. The ball delivered pretty well by the quarterback, Nelson, but Kelly could not hang on. Give you an idea of that Baltimore defense here in the first half with about 36 seconds of playing time remaining. The Cleveland Browns have been able to pick up a 21 yards on the ground. As that front four of Robert Smith and Billy Ray and Fred Miller and Ordell Brazy along with that secondary. Picking off two passes of Joe Nelson's, one by Richie Volk and the one by Curtis who set up the touchdown. Cleveland out strong to the right, dropping back is Nelson. The pass is completed to Haraway. Haraway across the 25 to the 30, down to the 32-yard line. The fullback on the catch, caught by the free safety, Rick Volk. And with 29 seconds remaining, the Browns have their first down at their own 32-yard line on the 16-yard pass play. Well, normally, Leroy Kelly will have as many yards as the entire Cleveland team has right now, and maybe even inside of one quarter. Kelly, of course, the National Football League rushing champion with 248 carries in the regular season, 1,239 yards. That's an even average of five yards every time he carried the ball. He was also the NFL's top scorer with 16 touchdowns on the ground and another four in the air. Now, Nelson at this point has thrown for 95 yards, has passed 17 times and has completed seven of his passes. Nelson took over in the third game this season. They say he goes to secondary receivers very well. Today he has not been especially brilliant so far. 29 seconds left in the half. Nelson is back and the ball is delivered and it's complete at the 45 yard line again to Haraway. Crosses midfield, goes to the close 45 and is down at the 42-yard line, again by Rick Volk, the free safety. And this time, Baltimore, it's an illegal call of the procedure against the Cleveland Browns, illegal procedure, that will nullify that one, and that's about the third time here in the first half that the Cleveland Browns have been called for illegal procedure, twice for illegal procedure and once for delay a game that has cost them long yardage. So instead of that fine gain on the end of that fast play from Nelson to Holloway, the ball comes back now to the 27-yard line where it remains first down and 15 to go. Incidentally, Bob, uh, Paul Warfield was shaken up on that play and has been taken out, and Tommy McDonald has come in to take his place. As a young man who has been around for a while, 12 years, little Tommy McDonald, 5'9", 175, good hands. And good moves, and he's very wide here to the left now. The five-yard penalty putting Cleveland back to the 27-yard line. Nelson putting the ball into the air and out to the 37. 
And it's incomplete, intended for Haraway, but he couldn't hang on to the ball. And we only have 16 seconds left in the first half. Mike Curtis was covering on that play. Baltimore, of course, has gone into a prevent defense. They have taken out lineman Billy Ray Smith, and they have brought in an extra defensive back, number 37, O.C. Austin, a rookie from Utah State. Ball still at Cleveland's 27-yard line. Warfield has gone back in there again now, Andy, in place of uh, Tommy McDonald. After Cleveland, 27. Second and 15 because of the penalty. Only one running back for the Browns who obviously have to put the ball in the air. Firing over the head of Kelly at the 30-yard line. Nelson could not find him at all that time. Kelly was open. He was being covered by Lenny Lyles and Rick Falk, but he was in front of him and open with an opportunity to grab the ball. How much additional yardage he would have made is up for question, but the quarterback could not find it. Now the clock shows 12 seconds, Bob Reynolds. Ordell Brady uh, harrying Nelson a little bit on that one as the big defensive right hand for the coach came swarming in there. 12 seconds showing on the clock. That's all. 17 to nothing. The score here of all the war leading. All of it coming in the second period after a Sousa first period in which there was no score and at which Baltimore was able to pick up 32 on the ground and Cleveland but six. Now the Browns again are in a definite passing situation. Firing out to Kelly on the left side, the screen develops, he goes to the 25, heading to his right at the 30, across the 35, and dumps just shy of the 40-yard line. Now the clock has been stopped again by the Browns and the scoreboard clock here shows two seconds remaining in the half. Dennis Corbett, middle linebacker, brought Kelly down. A yard shy of the Cleveland 40. The Browns did not make the first down. That's a little significant. They will not punt here, of course. I wouldn't think. Uh, now they're showing on the clock. Some of the uh, specialty teams drive it onto the field, Bob, and now they come off again. And Nelson waves them off. He said, ah, uh-uh, with only two seconds, I'm not going to catch the football trailing 17 to nothing. I'm going to put it in the air and go for that big one. So, with that being the strategy, looks like it's going to be up for grabs, Bob. That's what the uh, Baltimore coach defensively in a situation like this will do is obvious. They will keep probably only three men up front to uh, put some kind of a rush on, take one of the big defensive linemen out of there, and substitute for him with another defensive halfback on the obvious passing situation. So we'll see how they line up defensively, and that's just about what they're going to do. They've got Big Ordell, Brazy, and Miller, and uh, Roy Hills, Ronnie Hilton up front. That's right, just three in the forward rushing line. Nelson dropping back and way back. Fires out to the left side where Kelly grabs the ball at the 36, heads to the sideline, crosses the 40, driven out of bounds at about the 43-yard line as the clock expires and the gun goes off. So there's the gun ending the first half with the score, Baltimore 17 and Cleveland nothing.
Don Garlington, who plays on the specialty team. So the Baltimore coach will put it in play. First down again at the home, 22-yard line. About a 20-yard return that time. In the backfield for the Baltimore Colts, the Earl Morrill, the quarterback, Tom Manning, and Jerry Hill on the setback. Woody Richardson put out wide to the right this time. Jimmy Orr to the left as Earl Morrill calls the signal. Hands it off to Manning on a quick opening. He gets up to about the 25-yard line with it before Bob Matheson, the middle linebacker, makes the stop on him there. So a gain of about three on the play to bring up the second down at seven for Baltimore at their own 25-yard line. 17 to nothing to score. The Baltimore Colts, six-point favorites, coming into the ball game, lead it by 17. Out of the huddle now comes the Colts. They send Willie Richardson again, wide to the right, Jimmy Orr to the left, the setback to Matty and Jerry Hill. Earl Ball, the quarterback, underneath his center, Bill Curry, grabs the ball, steps right back into the pocket, goes long and deep for Orr, and it is incomplete. Dale Lindsay almost tipped it, the linebacker on the right side, and so it goes incomplete and brings up the third step of the Baltimore at their own 25 yard line. And it looks as though Cleveland was in zone defense that time, Bob, but it looked as though the quarterback and the receiver had different ideas of exactly how to split that zone. Johnny Williams tried to come out out of the field to go into that offensive line for Baltimore, but they stand out of there. And the Cleveland crowd starting to roar now. At their own 25 yard line as Ball grabs the ball and drops straight back into the pocket. Going long and deep for Richardson. He can't hold it. Covering on the play was Eric Barnes. And so it brings up a kick situation now. And this crowd of 80,000 or more coming alive and pouring the Cleveland Browns to get back in it. They play 17 to nothing. And Dave Lee, who does the punting for the Baltimore Colts, is in there. And the Colts have not had to punt until right now in the ball game. Yards. It's first and ten of the 48 of Baltimore. As Nelson gives the ball to Kelly again. And he 
gets down to about the 45 for about three. So the officials put the ball just over the 45 yard line, caught up the 46, getting two yards on the play, second down and eight. Cleveland in possession, second and eight. At the Baltimore 46 yard line, the crowd starts to yell again. It's Paul Warfield who comes out as the split in wide to the left. Gary Collins to the right. The setbacks again, Kelly and Haraway. Delson with a drop his back at number two. Very quickly, he's got Collins there. Was 
covering him all the way. And so the Baltimore defense equal to the task again here as the Cleveland Browns putting the pressure on from the opening kickoff here in the second half. Moved it down deeply, actually, to the 33-yard line before they were forced up to the 43, where it's now fourth down at 20 from the 43. Richardson wide to the right. Maddie is in the slot. 
across to the left. And Hill is the setback. Oh, quickly. Oh, good. It was intended for Orr. He threw it quickly, and Orr was a little ahead of the ball. He was a little slow behind him, and so it brings up a fourth down at 10 after 31. And once again, Dave Lee comes in to do the punting for the second time of the afternoon. 8.33 remaining in the third period of play. 17 to nothing, Baltimore. Dropping back, Tommy McDonald along with Ben Davis. Waiting for the snap from center is Lee. Here it is. He gets his kick away. Davis grabs it at the 30, looks for some running room. His hit and drops as he gets to about the 34, and that's all. And so the Browns will put him in play after that 39-yard kick by Lee. First down and 10 at their own, around their own 34-yard line. Bill Nelson at quarterback, Leroy Kelly and Charlie Holloway at the setback. Bill Moore in the tight end, Paul Wolfie with the split end, Gary Collins in there at the flanker post, Shafrath and Clark to the tackle, Dickerman and Denari the guard. Warfield comes way wide to the left, Lenny Lyles plays him loose about 10 yards, Collins is put a little bit to the right. The ball handed off on a quick opener to Kelly, and Kelly doesn't get any running room, and he's forced back. It's Haraway. That's the ball carrier. Got it up to about the 37 for about three. They move out of there. We'll see where the ball is. The 38-yard line, give him four on it. Give three, call it the 30 seconds. Second down at seven yards to go. The ball is at the 37-yard line. Second and seven, the Brown 37. Cleveland in possession, trailing 17 to nothing. 7.34 to play in the third period. Only one flanker now, wide to the right. Here's Nelson taking, dropping back. Rushes on, he goes long and deep. Then he gets to Warfield, and Richie Wolf is right there with him around the 25-yard line, and it goes incomplete, and there is a flag on the play. So we'll wait and see what this one is all about. It was second and seven from the 37. And Nelson wet feet. Richie Wolf covering on the play. The penalty appears to be against the Cleveland Browns again. Well, there's no question the uh, Browns really have been hurt by the penalty play here today. Only about once, and that was on the field goal. Second field goal try to give them a second chance. Along with a 15-yard, probably an offensive holding penalty. We were right for the signal. Moves the ball back down to the 17. There's the signal from the official. Offensive holding. So the down remains the same. Second down. 22 at the 17-yard line. Penalty-wise, that's the seventh penalty for 49 yards against the Cleveland Browns. Second down and about 25 from the 17. As Nelson grabs and drops back. Throws a little quicker to Haraway at the 11. Haraway gets up to the 20. Grab there and wrestle down, and the first one to make contact with him was Freddie Lyles, number 43. And coming over to help on the play, Freddie Miller. They'll give him to the 22-yard line. Gain of about five and bring up a third and 20 from the 22. Cleveland Browns in possession at their own 22-yard line. They have it third down and 20. They trail 17 to nothing, and we have six minutes and 49 seconds of playing time remaining here in the third quarter. Weatherman had called for snow flurries here today, but he held those off at least and set the cold instead. Nelson looking over the defense, third and 20. Back he goes, looking, looking, and he's going to be hit and dropped, and he is making the tackle on El Brazy. He came firing through there again. And once again, Andy, that defensive front four of Bubba Smith and Billy Ray and Miller and, and Ordell Brazy earning him the defensive job that they have been noted for all season long. The loss back to the 15. Well, that's the first time this afternoon that front four has been able to trap Nelson back there. And this time, of course, it forces the Browns into a punt situation. Loss is seven on the play, fourth and 27 from the 15. And Kupra is standing back at the one-yard line. Jimmy Brown is the single safety man. The kick is high and wobbly, and a fair catch is signaled for by Timmy, and he grabs the ball at the 48 or 49-yard line of the Browns. Yard kick that time. We call the ball at the 49 yard line and we're getting a timeout on the field with the score Baltimore 17, Cleveland nothing.
with 2.25 remaining in the third period. Willie Richardson is the only biker. He is wide to the right. Matty and Phil. And it is Matty into the end zone. Touchdown. A dive over the right side. Two yards for Tom Matty, and that's his third touchdown of the afternoon as the Browns go 49 yards in seven plays. Uh, the Colts, rather, 49 yards in seven plays. Matty scoring his third touchdown of the afternoon. And the score now, 23 to nothing. Well, Bob, it's obvious that the uh, Browns really have some coming back to do right here. And it's interesting to note that Cleveland has not been shut out all season. They did have four losses during the regular season, but no shutouts. Michael's attempt at conversion is up, and it is good. So there is time out on the field with the score. Baltimore, 24. Cleveland, nothing. You told them pretty regular, right? And picking up a so-so average. But you're not getting all the pins you think you got coming to you. And with a few more pins here or there, you really have an average worth talking about. You try changing something here and something there, but it doesn't work. Then somebody tells you about a new bowling ball from Ace called the Ace Limited. And you perk up because you learn that the Ace Limited has a high rebound power core right in the center of the ball. And this power core really gives your ball action. But he does it ever. Your Ace Limited ball has so much life it doesn't know when to quit. And now all of a sudden, a few pins that were standing up here and a few pins that were standing up there start tumbling down. And your average starts creeping up. And Ace Limited bowling ball, you are beautiful. Beautiful! Of course they call you Limited because they haven't made many of you. So the time to get yours is soon. Take that now. Look out, pins. You're going to get yours. Back into the action here, 24 to nothing, the Baltimore Colts. Dropping back into the deep spot to receive the kickoff with Reese uh, Morrison, number 26, and Ben Davis back there. A couple of speedsters, Drew Michaels, ready to boot, comes forward, and here's his kick. Good one, deep. And this one goes right over the goalpost and into the end zone and out of the field of play, and one of the youngsters comes in to down it for the Cleveland Browns. So they'll put it in play, first and ten of their own 20-yard line. Well, Bob, we're going to have a new quarterback now for the Cleveland Browns, Frank Ryan. The 11-year veteran from Rice has been warming up on the sidelines. He has been booed here at Cleveland Stadium on occasion, on many occasions, in fact. But today he is receiving the cheers of this crowd as he comes on in the role of a relief quarterback now to see if he can't get the Browns rolling. While Nelson was in there, he completed 11 out of 26 for 132 yards and had two interceptions. He just hasn't been able to get any offense going, and so they're going to Frank Ryan now. And Frank bubbles the ball on the first play that's recovered by Don Schimmick at the 20-yard line. At the 19, actually. Well, if he's been fooled before, the poor guy is not hearing many cheers now. The very first time he handles the ball, he actually tried to step back out of the pocket uh, with the ball before he had it. And Don Schimmick, the middle linebacker, was right there to fall on it, and so now... The uh, Baltimore Colts have the ball. We're going to call it right at the 20-yard line. Well, the complexion of things really changes, Andy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true, Bob. Frank Ryan has played very little this year. He lost his regular job in the third game of the season. And since then, he has probably played only about four quarters. There's time out on the field right now with the score of Baltimore 24, Cleveland nothing. Your lips have done a lot of nice things for you. Well, what have you done for them lately? After all, the weather is getting colder and windier and snowier and just plain lousier. And your two lips are the very first things about you to suffer. So why not get them a little protection? Get them Chapstick Lip Balm. Chapstick is designed specifically to keep your lips from chapping, cracking, and drying out in winter weather. And it actually keeps them looking and feeling even when there's a blizzard blowing. No wonder the National Football League decided to place a big supply of chapstick lip balm in every National Football League locker room from the Los Angeles Coliseum to the Yankee Stadium. If chapstick lip balm works for the NFL, it certainly will work for you. Pick up a chapstick lip balm in the familiar black and white tube next time you shop, and don't take your lips anywhere without it. And here's another product from the marketers of chapstick lip balm you shouldn't be without, Chap Ann's Hand Cream. Chap Ann soothes and helps heal rough red hands in only three days. It really works. Back into the action here. Play started a little quickly. Matty in motion, took the hand off, rolled out to his right, and got down to about the 18-yard line with it for a couple of yards. Bob, 
but he uh, had the blocking set up that time to throw the halfback option pass. Uh, he couldn't find anybody open, but he definitely had that in mind as he ran straight up out to the right side, and the forward blocking wall held in pass position. He has the option on that play, as you mentioned, Andy, uh, so many times. You take that hand up, roll out. If he sees a chance to throw, he will. Otherwise, he'll keep it. Three touchdowns by Matthew, incidentally. has tied the National Football League's title game uh, record. And here's the ball headed off this side of Hill. And what an opening he gets. Spins his way down to the five-yard line with it before he's brought down. And it is Mike Cowell who finally makes the stop on Jerry. Down up the five-yard line. Bob, they made a change in the uh, defensive setup for the Browns. They took Kanicki out and put Marv Upshaw in, a first-year man from Trinity, and they ran that player right at him. First down and goal to go for Baltimore, who are threatening to open it up wide here. The ball is at the five-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Baltimore leading it 24 to nothing. About seven seconds left in the third quarter as Borrow calls the signal. Grabs the ball, gives it off to Matty. Matty trying to find some running room off of his left tackle. Gets down to about the three-yard line, and Marv Upshaw is there to bring him down. And there is the end of the third quarter with the score of Baltimore 24, Cleveland nothing. the most satisfying taste of any filter cigarette. Light up a can and find out for yourself. More taste, fine tobacco. To a gourmet, it's a special taste. Taste has a filter that brings out the taste. Rich, full, satisfying. More taste, fine tobacco. If you smoke a filter cigarette, try the taste of Kent. story that uh, Tom Matty, who certainly has been one of the heroes of this game, played his high school football right here in Cleveland. Of course, he's in a Baltimore uniform today. He scored three touchdowns, but he attended Shaw High School right here in East Cleveland. So the fans here know him very well. Ball is on the three-yard line right now. The Colts operating in tight again. And I suppose we can start talking about turnaround being fair play because it was uh, the Browns 27 and the Colts nothing on this same field back in the 1964 National Football League Championship game. Second down and goal to go now for the Baltimore Colts. Leading it 24 to nothing. First play in the fourth quarter. Ball is at the three-yard line. And out of the huddle they count. Willie Richardson flanked out wide to the left. About 10 yards, that's all. As Earl Ball leans underneath Curry and calls off the signals. Grabs the ball, takes the handoff, keeps it himself on a broken play, and he gets back just about to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Earl Ball, who carries the ball very infrequently, carried it that time because he had no choice. It was a broken play. He was obviously intending to hand it off, but the guy had gotten by him. It was Matty, I believe, who was the intended uh, ball carrier, and he got by him too quickly, so Earl just turned and, and uh, got back just about to the line of scrimmage, where it is third down, still goal to go, and the ball is just inside of the three-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. And Willie Richardson has gone out of there now, and Tom Mitchell has come in at tight end. So they have both Mackey and Mitchell in there. Fanny has carried for 73 yards, Jerry Hill for 54. All set. Third and goal. The ball just inside the three. Matty slides out a little bit to the right. Four is flanked out way to the right. And back goes Earl to throw. Looks for somebody. Fires it into the end zone. And Matty can't hold on to it. Jim Marshall was back there with it. And Matty lost sight of it as Marshall was there. Jim Houston, rather. Number 82. Young man from Ohio State. Covering all the way on the play. Well, that was a pretty fine defensive play because, in a way... Houston was beaten on that play as he trailed it. And he just swatted his arm up in the air, sort of windmill fashion. And he was lucky enough to get a piece of that ball. So on fourth down, and still the three yards to go for the, for, for the touchdown, Lou Michaels is going to have to get it up in the air quickly. He's going to get the field goal for the 10-yard line. Quick up in the air, he goes with it, and it's good. So a 10-yard field goal by Lou Michaels. His second field goal of the afternoon now makes the score. Baltimore 27, and the Cleveland Browns nothing, and that is an indicative score if I have ever heard one. Seems to me, Andy, with 
back a few years ago, there was a score like that. You're right, Bob. That's exactly what it was, 27 to nothing. Of course, it was the other way around. It was uh, Cleveland over Baltimore. The Colts had been favored that time, too, but they didn't get the job done that day. And uh, the two fellows who were starting quarterbacks on that afternoon, Johnny Unitas and uh, uh, Frank Ryan, have both been in substitute roles here today. Unitas has not seen any action at all. And Frank Ryan would just as soon not talk about the action he has seen. He was in for one play. He fumbled the ball, and uh, the Colts recovered. So we have 14 minutes and five seconds left to go in this football game, which shows Baltimore strongly in front, 27 to nothing. Now for the kickoff, back to Bob Reynolds. Blue Michaels all set. Reese Morrison is back there along with Ben Davis to receive, and here's the boot by Michael. Line drive kind of. Bounces around. Davis picks it up after three. Up to the 10. The 15. Tries to find some running room and Flint and Alex Hawkins really cracks into him and drives him back and they'll allow the forward progress to about the 17 or 18. About a 14 yard return on the play. Preston Pearson was in there. And Ryan has gone in as quarterback time that he handled the ball, he fumbled, recovered by the Colts, which resulted in a field goal. Now he is in there, the ball is first down and 10, and it is at the 18-yard line of the Browns, and Ryan drops back to throw, and two flags go down as he throws a long, deep bomb, and the flag goes down around the 38-yard line, it was intended for Paul Warfield, and Lenny Lyles and Warfield both bumped on the play, and we'll see. We mentioned before the play unfolded, there were flags thrown. So the ball is coming back to the line of scrimmage, which is the 18. And it appears as though the referee is giving the motion for an illegal procedure call against the Cleveland Browns. Well, it looks like we're going to go right back where we started. Probably offsetting penalties here. We'll keep the ball at the 18-yard line. And it occurs to me that uh, certainly one of the reasons the Browns have gone to Frank Ryan is simply because he is a little better long faster than Nelson. And trailing 27 nothing here, long passes and a few other things are what the Browns need. That's exactly the call of the officials, offsetting penalties, although they really don't offset, do they, when you get well, a pushing no, ball way down deep like that. Ernie Green has gone into the lineup now for the uh, Cleveland Bounds is one of the running backs, and here is Ryan back to quickly throw it. He does to Milt Moore, and Morrow grabs it at the 25 and fights his way up to about the 28-yard line, and he's thrown down there by Richie Boak. Milt Moore, the tight end from the University of Massachusetts, born in Lamister, Massachusetts, and went to high school in Pittsburgh at St. Bernard's High School. Brings back memories to me, George Perkins. He used to live in Pittsburgh. Our executive producer here today for CBS, George Perkins, director of Radio Sports for the network. A little cold, but enjoying the action. All set. Ryan dropping back to throw. The rush is on, and he can't get it away, and he's hit and dropped. Wardell Brazy makes the stop on him. The ball is picked up by Ernie Green, and he tries to run with it. Gets up over the 20, or rather by uh, Roy Kelly. And Kelly gets up over the 15 and about to the 19 before he's brought down. We'll see where they give him the ball. Up over the 20, they call it at the 22. Ordell Bracey came firing through there on Ryan and grabbed him and threw him down. The ball squirted away from him. And Leroy Kelly grabbed it and started up field with it and got to the 22. Bob, not to make excuses, but it uh, would appear as though the cold here has finally gotten to the players. They've been out in it now for about two hours, and it is in the 20s, in the low 20s, and awfully chilly. Third down now for the Cleveland Browns as Ryan from the 22 drops back to throw, fires it to Morin, and Morin makes again a good catch at the 32-yard line, and he's hit and dropped immediately. Logan is there, along with Denny Garbot, at the 32-yard line of Cleveland. Ten yards on the play, and a first down, of course, for the Browns. First and ten. They are at their own 32-yard line. They trail in this championship game 27 to nothing. With 11.31 remaining to be played, before the winner of this one will head for the warm climates to get ready for the big one against the New York Jets. Collins is wide to the right, Warfield to the left, Ryan fakes and drops back, going long and deep, hit at the last moment. The ball is batted away and is incomplete pass. His intended receiver was Collins, and in there to make the 
contact with uh, Ryan was Freddie Miller, the big right tackle. So the ball will come back to the line of scrimmage, which is the 32, bring up a second down at 10 from the 32. The cold is not only getting Andy to the players out there, but it's getting us up here, too. I wonder if they can hear us shivering, Bob. Incidentally, I think the, uh, the use of Ernie Green uh, has something to do with the long passing situation. I don't know how often they'll use him as a ball carrier or a receiver, but he probably is a little better blocker than the fellow who started at fullback for the Browns today, Charlie Haraway. Well, the way the Browns have been going, of course, they'll throw everybody possible and they'll try everything because nothing has been working for them at all here against this Baltimore Colts up this afternoon, as the score indicates. And here's Ryan back to throw again. Fires one down here, no good. This one again intended for Bill Warren around the 45-yard line of the Browns. So it'll bring up a third down and 10 from the 32. Some days, as they say in this game, it uh, doesn't pay to get out of bed. Things just go wrong for you. And from the very onset of things, uh, your passes don't work. You can't establish a running game. And uh, it's one of those things. Well, it's uh, that situation here in Cole Cleveland's Municipal Stadium here this afternoon for the hometown Browns. You've got to believe, Bob, that if you were going to be a performer in this game, you would probably just as soon start as come in and relief because it, they talk about warming up on the sidelines, but frankly, that's impossible. Unless you sit in one of those gas heaters over there, Andy. Here's uh, Ryan back to throw again, and Ordell Brazy's got him and rolls him down around the 25. Roy Hilton, number 85 in there, who took Bubba Smith's place, and so Ryan had no chance that time as the Baltimore defense, which has dominated this ball game from almost the opening gun, continues to put the pressure on, and it doesn't matter whether it's Ryan or Nelson. The ball at the 25-yard line, fourth down, 17. And Don Cockroft is back in kick formation. Timmy Brown, the single safety for the Baltimore Colts. And the kick is a good one, and Brown signals for the fair catch, grabs the ball, fumbles it, falls on it at the 33. And so, with 10 minutes and 46 seconds of playing time still remaining, the lights incidentally here at Cleveland have been on all afternoon. We have timeout called on the field with the score, Baltimore 27, Cleveland nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Rogers. Somebody had a call? A call with birth control. And now it's a habit, Will. Yes, Columbia has found over 70 great radio broadcasts of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. A truly nostalgic collection. The Lewis Schmeling fight, Lou Gehrig, Burns and Allen, Will Rogers, W.C. Fields, Young Widow Brown, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Durante, Pearl Harbor, FDR, Churchill, MacArthur, plus many more. Over 70 old-time radio broadcasts for only $5.50 complete. You'd expect to pay up to $15, but now Columbia brings you over 70 broadcasts for only $5.50 on free 12-inch LP albums. Offer not available in stores. Complete money-back guarantee from Columbia. Send $5.50 to Old Time Radio, Fox 490, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. That's $5.50 to Old Time Radio, Fox 490, Grand Central Station, New York. Bob Reynolds, along with Andy Musser, here from Cleveland's Municipal Stadium. This is his first down at 10 Baltimore at the Baltimore 33-yard line. 10.46 to play in the ball game. Baltimore leading 27-0. Earl Ball has gone all the way at quarterback, calling the signals. Grabs the ball, hands it off to Matty. Matty going to his right, trying to cut back in. Now does, gets up over the 35 and is pushed back. And they'll give him to about the 37-yard line. A gain of about four on the play. Ten seconds now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. In Chicago, CBS, WBBM News Radio 78 in Chicago. The Chicago temperature 23 degrees, and it's now 30 seconds past 4 o'clock. Second down and six. Matty picking up four on the play. The ball at the 37-yard line of the Baltimore Colts. Second down and six to go. Jimmy Orr and Willie Richardson both flanked out wide to the left this time. Four on the outside, Willie Richardson on the inside. The ball goes to Matty on a running play to the outside, to the right side, and Matty gets to the 45. Matty gets to the 45-yard line with it before Bob Matheson, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. Matty has uh, suffered some type of an injury here, Bob, and has been helped from the field. Timmy Brown has come in to take his place. 
Also, the Browns have made a defensive switch, sending uh, Jack Gregory from the right defensive end over to the left side. And they have the 11-year veteran from Baylor, Bill Glass, in at his old right uh, defensive end spot. Matty, heard on the play over along the sidelines, has picked up 85 yards himself. First and 10 for the Colts at their 45. Quick opener, the handoff, uh, handoff is to Hill. And he gets close to midfield, about the 49-yard line of the Baltimore Colts before he's brought down. And making the stop on him was Bill Glass. They mark it as the 49, gain of four, second down, and six to go. For the first down, Baltimore at the Baltimore 49-yard line. 27 to nothing, the Colts leading it. 8.49 to play. Ball as Jimmy Orr wide to the left. Grabs the ball. Hands it off to Jimmy Brown this time, who's in there for the first time offensively. He's been receiving kicks and so forth. And uh, Jimmy goes down to about the 46 of the Browns before Jim Houston makes the stop on him. So there's a gain of about four. Third and two. Bob, uh, when the second half started, there certainly wasn't an empty seat to be seen here in Cleveland's uh, stadium, which holds just over 80,000, but now I'd say it's only about three quarters full. Uh, the crowd probably hasn't given up on the Browns, but they've had enough of the cold. <laughs> That's that third down and two for Baltimore. They're at the 44-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Now fake handoff, and back goes Maul to throw. He throws to Richardson. He's got Richardson at the 25, and Richardson is pulled down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Making the stop was Eric Barnes, who was with him as they mark at the 19. He was the only deep receiver. As a matter of fact, he was the only receiver out on the pass pattern. And Morrill hit him with it. Willie Richardson at the, about the 20, and he's pulled out of the 19-yard line. Gain of about 25 on the play. First down and 10 now. The ball is at the 19-yard line of the Cleveland Browns and Earl Morrill this afternoon. Having a fine day. 10 out of 24. For 175 yards. He hands off to Hill this time on a quick opener. And Hill dives down to about the 15. Picking up about four on the play. They mark it between the 15 and the 16. Second down will throw it about six to go for the first down. The ball at the 16. Second down and seven. 27 to nothing. Baltimore well out in front. Well on their way to winning the National Football League Championship here. 27 to nothing, Baltimore well out in front. And well on their way to winning the National Football League Championship here. This is the fourth time that they've been in a championship game. They have won twice and lost once before. And they are well in control of this one at the moment. The ball had it to Timmy Brown, and Timmy gets nowhere, just about to the 15 with it for a yard. There was no hole. Making the stop, Bill Glass again. And along with Bob and Upshaw. So with the ball at the 15-yard line, it is third down and six to go for the first down. Baltimore in control. Six minutes and six seconds to play, and they have been in control throughout most of the ball game. Morrow brings him up over the ball, third and six from the Cleveland 15-yard line. Earl grabs the ball, drops back into the pocket, looks, gets pretty good protection, rolls down to the right, throws it to, to Terry Cole at the 15, and Cole is pulled out at the 13-yard line. Terry Cole, who's in there at fullback, as injured, uh, did not play last week, but he was ready to go today, and he's back in there now seeing some service. He goes out of the lineup along with Bill Curry as the fourth down situation comes up with the ball at the 13-yard line and about four to go as Lou Michaels will, run, will attempt one now from the 20-yard line. And he, uh, Bob Boyd will hold for it as usual. Lou Michaels attempting a field goal here from around the 20. Pass and center is placed down at the 20. The ball is up in the air and it hits the goal post. It hits the goal post and falls to the left side, no good. But there were two flags thrown on the play, so we will we'll wait and see. It appeared as though the uh, Cleveland Browns were offside on the play, and so Michaels 
will not have to attempt any field goal because that will give the Browns the uh, Baltimore Colts a first down. It was fourth down and four. The Browns were offside. It'll be first down and goal to go at the eight-yard line. Like we said, Andy, some days it doesn't pay to get up. Well, that's right, and Bob, uh, we don't want to be repetitious, but here's an offside penalty against the Browns, and we've been pointing out throughout this broadcast how penalties have hurt Cleveland today. Certainly, this will not be the reason for their losing, but uh, there have been key spots in this ball game where the Browns have been penalized, and uh, they've been penalized eight times for 54 yards, Andy. Well, and the Colts have frequently taken advantage, you're right. First and goal to go now at the eight-yard line. The ball handed off to Terry Cole outside the right tackle and over the five down to about the four. And Jim Houston was the number one man to hit it. Clock continuing to run. It shows four minutes and 57 seconds. The ball at the four-yard line. Well, this is where we uh, should really give some credit to the blocking unit for the Baltimore Colts, and maybe in particular someone like Bob Vogel, who has played all the way at left tackle today despite suffering a broken wrist last week. He has it in a cast. He had some padding on it. But I'll bet you that wrist is really going to be painful after today. Bob uh, was scheduled to go to the Pro Bowl. Whether he will now or not, I don't know. But he and the others across the forward wall have opened up some beautiful holes today. Now, at $8,000 will help that uh, hole of his. And back goes Timmy Brown into the end zone, right off the tackle for the touchdown. Four yards, Timmy Brown. And the Baltimore Colts now make it. 33 to nothing. And Jimmy Brown had no trouble. Just took the handoff from Earl Wall. Cut back inside, found a little running room, and went right in for the touchdown. And Michaels would attempt the extra point. They go 67 yards in that drive at 11 plays. Lou Michaels now waiting for the ball to be snapped back to Bobby Boyd. He places it down. Michaels kick is up and good. So there's timeout on the field with the score. Baltimore, 34, Cleveland, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Burns and Alice. Let's talk about something else. Oh, Gracie, I'm sorry to hear about your missing brother. Oh, that's too bad, George, because my brother's missing, too. Yes, Columbia has found over 70 great radio broadcasts of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. A truly nostalgic collection. The Lewis Schmeling fight, Lou Gehrig. Burns and Allen, Will Rogers, W.C. Fields, Young Widow Brown, Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Durante, Pearl Harbor, FDR, Churchill, MacArthur, plus many more. Over 70 old-time radio broadcasts for only $5.50 complete. You'd expect to pay up to $15, but now Columbia brings you over 70 broadcasts for only $5.50 on free 12-inch LP albums. Offer not available in stores. Complete money-back guarantee from Columbia. Send $5.50 to old-time radio. Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York, 10017. That's 550 to Old Time Radio, Box 490, Grand Central Station, New York. The happy Baltimore Colts along the sidelines now. 34 to nothing, they lead this one. And they'll forget the call after this one is over. As they head for Miami in the Super Bowl game. As Michaels gets set to boot, here's his kick. To be taken down there at the 10 yard line by Reese Morrison. Up to the 20, he goes to the outside, to the 25, to the 30, and ridden out of bounds over there in front of the bench around the 33 yard line. And as Andy mentioned earlier, more than 60%, I would say, of this huge crowd, which approximated 80,000, which were here for the start of things, have left for the warmth of their automobiles and their homes. At game time, it was about 24 degrees, and it has dropped steadily since that time. The skies have been overcast all day, and we've had a stiff wind blowing out of the lake at around 20 miles an hour. The chill factor here has been just around zero. The ball at the 33 as Ryan goes back to throw on first down. He fires it out here, and it's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Charlie Stooks, who's in there at the, one of the safety spots for the Baltimore Colts. And Charlie almost had that one. Had he been able to pick it off, there was nobody in front of him. So Ryan will try it again. Second down and 10 from his own 33. The uh, Colts, Bob, of course, have made several defensive changes now. They have Sid Williams in at one of the linebacking positions. Ron Porter is also in there. 
And uh, they're giving their subs a chance to play here. And Stooks nearly made one of the great players of the day. Everybody into the ball game. Everybody into the pool here. Ryan handing it off to Ernie Green this time. And Green is stacked up in the middle as he gets a couple to about the 35. And that's all. Denny Gorbitz was in there to make the tackle on him. And certainly in summation of this one, Andy, we can say that it's been a Baltimore close day, both defensively and offensively. That great front forward of the two Smiths and Miller and, uh, and Ordell Brazy, along with the linebacking team of Curtis and Gorbats and Shinnick. And the defensive secondary simply have been too much for the Browns today. They have contained them all afternoon. And offensively, Earl Morrill has directed the attack for 34 points. Ryan back to throw again. The ball is deflected this time. As he goes to throw it by Lou Michaels, he's playing a little off, a little defense for the Baltimore Colts here, and he deflected that pass of Ryan's, and it'll bring up a third down and ten after 33. And frustration, of course, has to be the name of things this afternoon for the Cleveland Browns. It's fourth down, correction, fourth down from the 33-yard line. Don Cockroft is in there to do the punting. And Timmy Brown is back in the single safety for the Baltimore Colts after 32. Here's the pass from center. Cockroft gets it away. And Brown signals for the fair catch, grabs the ball at the 31-yard line. So, three minutes and eight seconds remain to be played here at Cleveland's Municipal Stadium with the Baltimore Colts leading it 34 to nothing on their way to a Super Bowl engagement with the New York Jets in Miami two weeks from today. Bob, the uh, Baltimore defense here today has been everything that we've heard about it. And uh, now it turns out that their second line defense with some of the regulars in there too also did a tremendous job forcing the Browns into that last punch situation. Now the Colts have the hands on their football again. They have uh, Earl Ball at quarterback still. But Cole is in there, and Timmy Brown also, and Brown has the ball this time, and he fights his way up close to the 35 or 36 before he's brought down. Ernie Kellerman was the first man in to make contact with it. So from the 31, which was the line of scrimmage, the officials are putting the ball down at the 36-yard line. And Jim Ward also is in there now for the Baltimore Colts. Schuler uses everybody that he's brought with him. Ball at the, actually between the 36 and 37, we'll call it the 37 yard line. Second down at about four to go for the first down. Two minutes and two seconds to play, and the two minute warning will be coming up in here in a second or two, and it does right there. So there are two minutes left to play in this ball game with the score 34 to nothing. Well, this uh, young quarterback, Bob, that the Colts have brought in now, Jim Ward, has not seen much action in the NFL. He is a second-year man out of Gettysburg. He was not on the team at the beginning of the year because of injury, which actually necessitated the acquisition of Earl Morrill uh, prior to the injury of Johnny Unitas. Uh, Unitas was not injured, you'll recall, when the Colts got Morrill, but it was because they had no healthy backup quarterback that they needed a veteran so badly. And, of course, uh, Morrill has turned out to be Mr. Everything for Baltimore this year. But talking again about Ward, in the regular NFL season, he threw the ball only nine times, had three completions for 46 yards, did not have any touchdowns, and he did have one pass interception. He did not play college ball at one of the big schools that turns out professional football players, but rather went to Gettysburg, a small college in Pennsylvania, near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Ward is 6'2", 195 pounds, but he was a good pro prospect, and he has now been in the Colts system for a couple of years. But Baltimore has brought him on here to have a little game experience in the event that it might be necessary for him to play in the Super Bowl. All set to go now with young Jimmy Ward in there at quarterback for the Baltimore Colts. Ward takes it, hands it off to Terry Cole. And Cole powers his way up over the 40 to about the 42. A minute and 52 remaining to be played. The ball at the 42-yard line now, and it's a another first down for the Baltimore Colts. Earl Morrill directing the Baltimore attack today, completed 11 out of 25 for 177 yards. And the Colts, just before that play, had picked up 175 yards on the ground. Tom Maddy had 85 of them. And Jerry Hill, 61. 
Ward again in a quarterback, calling the signals for the Baltimore Colts. Gives the ball off to Timmy Brown. Timmy Brown trying to find some running room. Doesn't find very much. Houston is the man who hits him first as he gets to about his own 44. Clock continuing to run. A minute and eight seconds, and this huge stadium and he is getting emptier by the moment. Well, that's right. It's starting to get dark here in Cleveland. The uh, lights have been on ever since the game started, but now, as we look out over Lake Erie here, it really is beginning to get dark. Incidentally, there was a rookie blocker out in front of Timmy Brown that time that we should mention. Connie Johnson, a rookie from Virginia Union, who is now playing in the game for the first time, and uh, they think he's going to be a good one. Timmy couldn't utilize his block to the best advantage that time, but he was out there. All set to go. Ball at the 44. Second down and about eight to go for the first down. 35 seconds. That's all that remains. And Terry Cole takes the handoff and plows straight ahead. And the clock goes 27, 26, 25 seconds and continues to run. And the Baltimore Colts with a superb defensive job and a fine attack directed by their most valuable player, Earl Ball, has moved its way as the gun goes off into the Super Bowl and has won the National Football League Championship here 34 to nothing. So that's the end of the game, and we'll be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. For 1969, Ford presents the going thing. original Mustang was something, wait till you see the all-new Mustang. It's something else. A longer hood, a sporty rear deck, roomier and groovier inside and out. So Mustang, with models as hot as the Mach 1, or as elegant as the Sunday. So Mustang Sports Roof, now priced down with a hard top. Mustang at your Ford dealer. The place you've got to go to see what's going on. So the National Football League Championship belongs to the Baltimore Colts. And it seems as though when these two teams meet for a championship, it is an overwhelming success for one side or the other. The Browns defeated the Colts 27 to nothing the last time they played back in 1964. And in fact, it's been since 1962 that the Colts have been able to defeat the Browns because you know Cleveland won an earlier game this year. But here today, Earl Morrow, although he did not hit 50% of his passes, had it in clutch situations. He didn't try to go long. He recorded 170 yards, completing 11 of 25 passes. And Tom Matty, a young man who played high school football right here in Cleveland, on to play professional ball in Baltimore with one of the big heroes here today, with three touchdown scores. So a good day by Baltimore. It is their third defensive whitewash of the season, and it actually marks the 11th time this year that the Baltimore defense has held the opposition to one touchdown or less. A magnificent job turned in by the Baltimore defense today. Some very quick statistics on the ball game. For the Browns, 12 first downs compared with 18 for the winning Colts. The Colts had 187 yards rushing compared with 53 for Cleveland. We've given you the passing figures for the Colts, but for the Browns, 13 out of 33 for 152 yards, combining the records of Nelson and Ryan. Penalties, and they hurt the Browns here today. There were eight of them for 54 yards. Some of them in key situations against Cleveland, whereas the Colts were penalized only three times for the very low total of only 15 yards. Well, Andy, the uh, Baltimore Colts striking for those 17 big ones in the second period to wrap it up for all intents and purposes, adding another touchdown in the third and 10 more points in the fourth period for the 34 to nothing victory here has uh, moved into their National Football League Championship on the Cole Winstrip stadium here in Cleveland's Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. It's been a afternoon which has been all Baltimore. The Cleveland fans, of course, disappointed, but they have nothing really to be ashamed of because this ball club from Cleveland, after the Baltimore game that they won earlier in the season in October, put together seven more straight victories before they lost their final season game against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Came on to beat Dallas decisively to win the Eastern Conference Championship and today gave it all they had against a Baltimore team that was not to be denied. And so, 
May I take this opportunity to say what a pleasure it's been to uh, share the broadcast microphone with you, Andy, and to wish you and all of our listeners a very happy new year, and we'll see them in the bowl games that are coming along. Well, thank you, Bob. I'll share the sentiments. It's been fun working with you, and we would like to remind our listeners of the games coming up on the CBS radio network, the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day, the Playoff Bowl on January 5th, and the Pro Bowl on January